Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for checking in to the Rocky Mountain YouTube channel. My name is Chase, and this is our UTV Sand Tires 101 video. If you're shopping for your next sand setup and you're having a hard time because maybe you don't know how many paddles do you want? Do you want a molded tire? Do you want a buff tire? What size? What rim size do you want? These are common questions that a lot of people ask and you can get lost in all that information. You could spend hours even just reading through all the forums, but the hard part is that there is no perfect exact answer for this and a lot of it's gonna be a writer opinion. So we just wanna give you the basic good information that you're gonna to need to make a good educated decision on what setup is gonna be best for you. So the categories that we're gonna to cover today, we'll talk about flotation, we'll talk about tire size and rim size, paddle count, and the different construction types that are available so you have good information to make a good decision. So let's dive right in. So one of the main reasons that sand tires are so effective and can help give as much traction and forward drive as possible in the sand is because of their flotation. And what we mean by this is just how well do these tires stay on top of the sand versus wanting to dig in. We all know that sand's a horsepower killer. So the more that your machine can stay on top of the sand, the better drive and the more efficient it's going to be. Now the way that they make sand tires so efficient with this is how lightweight that they can make these. These are a lot lighter compared to just a standard all-terrain tire. And the way they do that is with the carcass construction and the amount of rubber that they are using. With most of your all-terrain tires be being between an eight and a 10 ply rated tire, with sand tires, for example, we've got this Tux Sand Light tire here. This is a two ply rated tire, which means you've got a lot less rubber on there and that lower ply rating it really just helps reduce the overall weight of the tire. So that's one of the big benefits. Another big factor is the overall width of the tires. With most of your all-terrain tires between, being between 10 and 11 inches wide, with sand tires, you're anywhere from 12 to 15 inches wide. So you're getting a wider footprint. So when you take that lighter weight construction with that wider footprint, you're gonna maximize your flotation. Now the next category we're gonna cover is just tire size and also rim width. Another big factor to get the maximum amount of flotation and to maximize your tire size is with a wider rim. There's a lot of companies out there that make a 10 inch wide wheel specific for sand tires. For example, on both of these tires that we have in here today, we have the Tusk Teton beadlock wheel that's 10 inches wide with a five plus five offset. And that just allows you to maximize the width to get the most flotation you can get. Now, if you're trying to go as light as you can, one wheel that you could check out is the Douglas Ultimate Sport Wheels. They actually have those in sand specific sizes. And what's unique about those is they're made from a spun aluminum, which is super lightweight, but you're also getting that extra width for the rear. Another common question is, well, do you even need a beadlock wheel for the dunes? And from our experience, what we would recommend is yes, a beadlock wheel is going to be ideal. And here's why. So the first reason is that's gonna help prevent your tire from spinning on the wheel under hard acceleration, especially with these high horsepower machines that we have nowadays. And the other big benefit is that we all know out in the dunes, you're on side hills, your weight is shifting side to side a lot. And with a standard wheel, there's a lot of pressure when you're on those off camber hills that's being pushed against the outside of the wheel. And so a beadlock wheel is gonna help prevent your tire from possibly de-beading on the wheel, which we have seen happen several times. So those are the two big benefactors to having a beadlock wheel installed. Now as for tire size, here's what we also recommend. You wanna to stick to as close as you can to your stock tire size. And the reason for that is because like we said, sand's a horsepower killer and the larger si tires you get, the more power it's gonna to take to get those things spinning. And you wanna get as much horsepower as you can. So stick as close to your stock tire size as you can. And also, if you're using four wheel drive in the dunes, you wanna make sure that your front and your rear tires are the same diameter. That way they're spinning at the same rate. All right, construction types. Now in sand tires, there's two main construction types. You have molded and you have buffed. Now just looking at a buff tire, you can tell that th these things are pretty unique. And here's how they make a buff tire. They take a regular molded tire and then they go through and they actually shave off as much as the rubber as they can to make the tire as light as possible, again, to maximize the flotation. So once they've shaved off all that rubber, then they take the actual paddles and these are vulcanized back onto the tire. So that's how buff tire is made. Now the advantages of a buff tire is they're very, very lightweight. However, with that being so lightweight, you could sacrifice some durability and buff tires do tend to come with a premium price tag. Now when it comes to a molded tire, molded tires aren't as lightweight as a buff tire, but they have a good blend of still being lightweight and better durability. And really, a molded tire in most cases is gonna give you the best value, the most bang for your buck. Now one thing to keep in mind, 
It does not matter what sand tire you buy. It is very important that you only use these types of tires in the terrain that they were designed for. If you take one of these tires and you go into hard pack conditions, there's a good chance that you are gonna chunk up your paddle. So that is something that you just wanna be conscious of. All right, so the next topic, probably the most controversial is paddle counts. There is a lot of opinions out there about how many paddles are the best and ideal depending on your setup and where you're gonna be at. And again, this is something that you can read a ton of rider reviews, there's a ton of forums out there. Don't just take our word for it, go read what other people are saying. Heck, you could even go out to the dunes, you could see what other people are running, just to find out what you think is gonna be best for you. But when it comes to sand tires, you can see paddle count anywhere from eight all the way up to 15 or even 16 paddles on a sand tire. A great example of that are these two that I have right here. This Scat Track has nine paddles on it, it's a size 30, and then this Tusk Sand Light has 14 paddles and it's also a 30 inch tire. So there's a lot of variance there. But here's what you need to know, is that no matter what machine you put your sand tires on, you wanna have a good blend of those paddles digging in and giving that forward drive, but you also want a good blend of wheel spin, and yes, you heard me right. You do want your tires to spin a little bit when you do accelerate. And the reason for that is that as your tires start to spin, that's going to allow the engine to spool up and build power so you get really good drive forward. If your paddles are digging in too much, you don't get enough wheel spin, it's going to be harder for your engine to build that power. And a great example that I like to use is think of it as you trying to start out on a mountain bike and you're in a hard gear. You can still get up to the same speed, but it's going to take more work to start. It's going to take a little bit longer to get there. So you want to have that good blend. Now, one other thing to consider is, well, where do you spend most of your time? If you spend a lot of time in wet, heavier sand, you're probably going to want fewer paddles on your tires than you would in drier sand. So a couple things to think about there. Now, let's talk about the paddle design. Now, with buff tires, it's pretty straightforward. You've got your paddles, and it's completely smooth in between those. Now, with these Scat Track Extreme Grips, you notice that there's fewer paddles than the Sand Light. We have these available in an 8, 9, and 10 paddle option versus a 12, 14, or 15 with the Sand Light. So you do have fewer paddles, but you'll notice, though, that the paddles are a little bit taller, so they really do a great job of really digging into the sand and giving good forward drive. So if high speeds, drag racing, hill climbing are what you like to do the most, this type of tire is going to be a really Really good option for you. When you get to molded tires, you're going to see some variance there. For example, with this sand light, you've got your 14 paddles and in between all of those, you have these center ribs. And the purpose for those is to one, kind of help smoothen out the ride if you are on a harder surface, but also those are going to help prevent your machine from sliding out as easily, especially on those steeper hillsides. So with the molded tire, they're a great all-around option. They're not quite as light as a buff tire, but they're really good in a lot of different scenarios and conditions. All right, we're almost done. Last category to cover is front tire design. Now, when it comes to a buff front tire, they're completely smooth. And if going in a straight line as fast as you can, you're trying to maybe do hill climbs and you want to maximize horsepower and flotation, then a buff tire for you is going to be the route to take. Now, for most riders out there, probably going to benefit from a molded style tire because most sand molded tires you're going to notice will have some sort of rib design on these. You might have a rib going right down the middle, some have two ribs going down the middle, heck there's even some sand front tires that will have ribs on the inside and then be completely smooth on the outside. Now the reason for the ribs on those tires is to help with steering. Now, because these are designed to be as lightweight and float on the sand as much as possible, when you are out there, most of your control or your steering is coming from the rear of the machine. So having a rib going down the center of the tire is going to help just give a little bit of that biting edge to help with your steering. Now, there are even some front tires that have paddles on them. That way, when you're in four-wheel drive, you're getting your front and your rear tires that are digging in and helping give drive forward. Again, just like we've talked about with all the other categories, there's a lot of different opinions out there about which setup's gonna be best for you, so read, write, reviews, and find out what you think is gonna be the best setup for what you're gonna be doing. And that does it. That is our Sand Tires 101 video. So hopefully now, now that you know about paddle count, paddle design, the construction types, the different rim widths, and all that information, take that and utilize it to know, to find out what's gonna work for you. 
Again, read, write, and reviews. Go check out the forums. There's a lot of great information out there. And the last thing that we do want to talk about before we let you go is our tire and wheel package builder here at Rocky Mountain. It's a great way to get everything that you need and save some money because what you do is you go through, you pick the rim that you want, you pick the tires that you want, and we will mount them up and we will ship them to you and give you free shipping. So if you're looking to get all four tires all set up, it's a great way to get what you need to save some money. Now, if you have any questions about anything that we talked about today, we want to help you out. We'll help get those answers for you. So make sure, leave your comments and your questions below. I know there's a lot of you that are just dying to start hitting that keyboard. Well, tell us, what setup do you have? What tires are you running right now? What machine do you have? Where do you ride? What have you used in the past? What do you use now? What do you like? What do you dislike? Put all that information below because there's going to be a lot of riders that aren't quite sure. They're going to read your comments and that's really going to help them decide what's going to be best overall. And as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Get subscribed to the Rocky Mountain YouTube channel. We do have a tire and a wheels 101 video for just all terrain. So be sure to check that out depending on the wheels and tires that you're shopping for. But as always, from all of us here at Rocky Mountain ATVMC, we'll see you on the trails.